Hello friends and welcome back to Swift Lessons. For the debut of a new series I'm calling The Weekly Challenge. This week I'm challenging each of you to learn the names of the notes on the fretboard. This is the single most powerful thing that you can do to make progress as a guitarist quickly. So being able to identify the notes on the fretboard, this is going to open up a lot of doors and allow you to understand a wide variety of music theory concepts. For example, the connection between scales and chord shapes or even how to read musical notation. So now let's jump into my top six tips for being able to memorize the fretboard. Getting started with tip number one, memorize the musical alphabet. So this is all the notes that exist in music. A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, then it returns back to A and the sequence starts over. Now on the guitar, each of your six strings are tuned to one of the notes inside that musical alphabet. Okay, so for example, the A string is tuned to the first note of the alphabet, A. And then from there, as we climb up the fretboard, we're just going through the musical alphabet. A, B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, so on and so forth. By the time you get to the 12th fret, we're back to A again, the octave. Now, if you look at the D string, that's going to start on D, then each of the ascending frets will be the remaining notes in the musical alphabet. So, starting on D, we know which note is after D in our musical alphabet. It's E flat or D sharp, it's the same thing. So the first fret is your E flat, okay? After a flat comes a natural, so E flat, E, the second fret of the D string. So there's E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp. And like I said before, when you get to the 12th fret, we see those double dots. That indicates that it's an octave. It's where the D note is going to repeat itself. Okay, so that's basically the way the musical alphabet relates to the guitar's fretboard. Okay, now moving on to tip number two. Memorize the E and the A strings first. This is a very powerful thing to do because then you'll be able to recognize what key a scale is in. For example, if I find the fifth fret of the E string and I'm able to identify that as being an A note and I start a pentatonic scale from there, then I'll be able to quickly recognize that I'm playing an A minor pentatonic scale. Okay, and that'll be true no matter where I play. If I start on the eighth fret, I know that that's a C note, so then this would be the C pentatonic scale. That's also very, very useful for being able to recognize chords. If I play a bar chord, like an A major bar chord, that lowest note there on the fifth fret is A, and that's how I'm going to identify that chord as being A major. Additionally, it's very good for being able to recognize power chords. If I look at the A string, third fret, and then I form a power chord shape, uh, adding in the fifth fret of the D string, then I know that that's a C power chord or a C5 chord. All right, I can move that to any other fret on the fretboard. If I go to the seventh fret, that's an E5. If I go to the first fret, it's a B flat five. If I go to the E string, eighth fret, it's a C power chord or a C5. So this is a very powerful thing to do. Memorize the E and the A strings first. Okay, now moving on to tip number three, learn your octaves. Once you've memorized the names of the notes on the E and the A strings, we can use those strings to quickly identify notes on the D and the G strings. Here's how you do it. If I pick a note like uh, the fifth fret of the E string, remember that's an A note, then I go down to the floor two strings to the D string and then move up two frets or a whole step, seventh fret D string, I'm gonna find the exact same note. This is also going to be true on the A string. If I go to the fifth fret of the A string, I have a D note. Go down two, go up two, and I have another D note, G string seventh fret. So this is a very fast and easy way to identify notes on the D and the G strings. Now another method is to use the A and the B string. For example, if I go to the third fret of the A string, I have the note C but I'm gonna find another C note on the first fret of the B string. So it's just two frets apart. And that's going to be true up and down the fretboard. 
So if I learn my A string, and I go to the fifth fret of the A string, I see that D note, I'm gonna find another D note, for example, on the third fret of the B string. All right, very fast way for being able to identify the notes on the B string using your A string. Okay, great work everybody. So far, you have three very powerful tips for being able to learn the notes on the fretboard. If you're already making progress and you're taking this challenge seriously, then give me a progress report, tag me on Twitter, at Swift Lessons, and be sure to use the hashtag Swift Challenge. Okay, now moving on to tip number four. Memorize the first three frets, all six strings. So this chunk of the fretboard, this is a very important area of the fretboard to have memorized because it's where all of your basic major and minor chords are all hanging out. So if you're a patron, use the fretboard diagram that I've provided. See if you can figure out what notes are inside chords like A major, D major, or E minor. If you're not a patron, see if you can create your own diagram to figure out what notes are inside those common shapes. Okay, jumping into tip number five now, learn in five note batches. So the mind can only remember so much at one time. So what I suggest you do is pick a string like the high E string. Then take a look at a five note span, frets one through five for example. You can include the open string as well. What I'd start off doing is playing them in sequence and saying the names of the notes. E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. Okay, do that a dozen times, however many times it takes to start to memorize it. Then go backwards. Once you start to feel like you have a handle on it, start to mix them up in a random order, giving yourself a moment to identify the note. So I'll play a note and say E. I'll play another note, G sharp, F sharp, F, A, so on and so forth. I'll do that dozens of times until I feel comfortable, then I'll move up and start to practice frets five through nine in the exact same fashion. Okay, excellent work everybody. Now it's time for my sixth and final tip. Apply your study of the fretboard to all areas of practice. This is the fastest and most powerful way to really master the fretboard from top to bottom. So what does this mean? Well, basically, every single time you learn a new technique, ask yourself what notes you're playing. If you learn a new scale, like the A major scale, for example, it's not enough just to say, the fret numbers, five, seven, four, five, seven, so on and so forth. Instead, take the time to learn and recite the names of the notes that you're playing. And not just that, for an extra kind of boost to your progress, practice singing the notes. That way you're getting a little bit of pitch and ear practice in as well. So I might practice singing A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. And I'll also apply it when I learn a new lick or a melody. And I'll sing E, F sharp, A, F sharp, A. Apply my learning. Additionally, if I learn a new chord, I'll ask myself what notes are inside of the chord. That way I can better understand it. E, G sharp. Ah, then I'm gonna have D and G in this E7 sharp nine chord. All right, so every single time I learn a new technique, I always implement the names of the notes, so that way I can uh, spend a little bit of time kind of combining the different elements of my practice, make the most out of my practice time. Okay, excellent work everybody. You have my six tips for learning the fretboard. I wanna hear about your practice. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter, at Swift Lessons, hashtag Swift Challenge. I wanna see you breaking your scales down, saying the names of the notes, singing, breaking chords apart, whatever you need to do to show me your progress. I also wanna hear about your struggles. What's uh, been the hardest thing for you in terms of learning the fretboard? I got many more videos coming up, so keep checking back. Please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.